Now let's move on to viscosity. Viscosity is a way of blurring out the velocity values that you have going on in your simulation. So it's pretty much like taking a Gaussian blur and affecting your velocity field. That's pretty much what it's doing. So visually, here's how you might figure this out. Let's say that we have our PyroSim. We'll go forward a few frames so that we have something to work with. And I'm going to create a sphere which represents the radius in which things are allowed to blur outwards. Now, I already know ahead of time that the value we're looking for is going to be something around, we'll just do this real quick. There we go. The value that we're looking for is something around 0 0.02. So let's say I have a sphere. Let's bypass this transform. So this is where we're simulating things at. And imagine this sphere represents the radius in which voxels are allowed to look outwards when blurring their values, when averaging their values. That's pretty much what's happening here. So let's go ahead and merge this in so that we can see. Okay. So, and then I'll just go here. There we go. Let's take this uniform scale of 0 0.025. Whenever you're trying to figure out what value your viscosity should be, all you need to do is make a sphere like this and set it to something that's pretty small, like right about that. And again, this is the radius that voxels are allowed to look outwards whenever blurring their values. And so as you can see, these voxels aren't allowed to look very far. And in this case, we want just a little bit of this blurring effect to happen. So that's why we're going to keep it at a small value. If you wanted something like a candle flame though, or something like that, then you might go higher at a value of 0.1, and this would be how far out voxels are allowed to average their velocity. But in general, that's just one way that you can figure out what that viscosity value should be. In this case, I want just a little bit, so right about that should be good. Okay, that being the case, let's go to our prior solver, viscosity 0 0.025. And then I want to show you some comparison renders on what this looks like at different values. Now, here's something important about Pyro. There's a lot of different settings that all have to come together nicely for this to work out. And it's very easy for you to just adjust one setting and ruin the whole thing. Everything from the shader to the source volumes to the microsolvers, they all have to be dialed in pretty accurately to give you a nice effect. So let's dial in the shading. Again, I'm using Redshift. So let's go here, Redshift, Render View. And this is where we're going. Okay. Material. Here's the flame material. Right now, with this uh, viscosity, we're getting these nice solid bodies of flame, which is awesome. But what we want to do is introduce some of this blue in here. And uh, let's make this white real quick. So we want some of this blue and white to start happening. And I think maybe a ramp that looks right about there is pretty good. Let's go to our advanced tab and then turn up this new max so that we start clipping our values a little bit more. So that we start pushing them more towards the right hand side of the ramp. So we start going more over here. And right there, I mean, that looks pretty awesome. We do have, it's very subtle right now, but we do have some of this blue beginning to show through. And let's actually take this blue and give it some more saturation. So we'll go really far with that blue, like that. And we'll also take the white and go right up next to that blue. So we'll do something right about there, and then we'll just kind of drag out the black like so. Now let's say that you like the temperature, you like the velocity, everything's going good, except you really wish you can just turn down the height of the flames in general. 
without affecting velocity, without affecting temperature, because, you know, shredding relies on temperature, and you, you don't want to mess that up. So, luckily for us, we have a setting which will let us turn down the height of these flames without altering any of the other fields. And that's going to be through, if you go to the Pyre Solver here, this flame lifespan. This flame lifespan is in seconds. So, basically, the way this works is that the flame field is nothing more than a smoke simulation that gets cut off once it reaches a certain life lifespan. So, at two seconds right now, the flame gets cut off. Just imagine like a smoke field that gets cut off as soon as it's been alive for two seconds. That's basically what these flames are. So, let's try maybe 1.5 take it down by a half second and see what that gives us. So there you go. We have shorter flames, but we also didn't change the velocity in any way. So that's really good. I think the next step here is to create some velocity using a turbulence microsolver. And we'll check that out in the next video.